Mr. Fabry, I hope you well. Thank you so much for joining us. Glad to have you here. So thank you, Zinda. Uh, thank you for having me here. And I'm really excited to uh, sharing with you my thought about uh, data and security. Okay, Mr. Farabi, talking about the biggest challenges in maintaining mm. data security and privacy of today's digital era, what is your opinion? Uh, well, for sure, at least we can see there's uh, several challenges, but if we can define into two uh, sectors, right, into two factors, so we have an uh, external factor and also we have internal factors. So if you're talking about internal, uh, external factor, there's an increasing volume of data that exponentially growth of data and make it increasingly difficult to track, manage, and secure. The second one is real-time data processing, that uh, demand for real-time data processing. And this is also analysis, create exposure and risk, right? So also the, the other three is a sophisticated cyber attack. So cyber criminals right, are becoming more sophisticated they're using advanced technique and like AI power attack and ransomware to breach a security system. In other factors, which is from internal, what we can see is a demand from the regulatory compliance become complex, right? So the dynamic nature of the data protection regulation, uh, for example, like in the uh, law uh, number 27, right, uh, on the PDP. So that's required organization to adapt the strategy, how to ensure it and still comply. And the third one is a visibility of data lifecycle management. So this is very key because they need to ensure the data security and privacy throughout its entire life cycle, from collection to storage, processing and deletion, and it's a continuous challenge, right? The last one is uh, employee uh, awareness and behavior. So we can say also this one is like internal, internal traits, right? So human error remains a critical exposure, liability, and the educating employees uh, about data security best practice is uh, essential to prevent unintentional uh, breaches. So addressing these challenges, right, we require multi-layered approach that includes strong data encryption, strict access control policy and regular audit, and compliance to privacy regulation. But I think the most significant that I want to highlight on challenge is not just deploying at find security tools, but also creating a culture of security across the organization. So Mr. Ferry, how prepare our companies in Southeast Asia, mm -hmm. especially in Indonesia, in mm -hmm. implementing strong data security standards? Well, I'm leading for uh, uh, four countries, right? So I'm leading for Malaysia, Indonesia, Philippines, and also Vietnam, right? But what I can see, there's a varying stages of readiness in implementing robust data security standards, particularly in Indonesia, right? The region uh, has witnessed a surge on data protection regulation and introducing, introducing new policy requirement. So the challenge is uh, managing the data effectively. So from data collection, data storage, processing, deletion, and handling across the organization. So what they need is actually the right tools platform to ensure they have feasibility of their data across the organization at any point in time. Okay, so how, do, uh, how do such AI and analytic solution help companies manage uh, big data more efficiently to drive digital transformation? So I think uh, we, we discussed about big data and digital transformation for many years ago, 15, 20 years ago. But there is a key element, success, right, in order to have this organization running. So the three area that SAS really focusing is actually people, process, and technology. So why people? You know, you have a good process, you have a good technology, but if you, if, if you, if you don't have people to running it, then how you can implement an adoption, uh, adopting the, the, the technology? So it is a key to recognize the critical role of skilled professional in harnessing AI's potential. So, so organizations need to put investment in training and education to address the global AI talent shortage. So the way that's us helping, I mean, we build the resource, we build the capability. So we have a really specific, uh, you know, uh, syllabus for, for, uh, for uh, peoples when they, it depends on the maturity. So they can go as a data scientist, data analyst, right? But we have that kind of approach. So we want to ensure, shape the future 
uh, when we engage with industry or the company. The second one, we're talking about process. You have a good people, you have a good technology, but you don't have process on place. So SAS with our SME industry, right? So SME is our subject matter expert. With that background, they help the customer, they help the industry, right? So uh, to, to integrate between people and technology uh, to adopt uh, AI and analytics into the process. Because, you know, there's a, we can have a good process, but sometimes the process cannot be executed because it, the technology probably, probably the process is not applicable with the technology. That's why in the third one, the technology is a key. So industry or company need to decide so which technology can help them to cover end-to-end -end process on end data lab cycle, right? So we can say that this is single source of data. So uh, uh, what we do is really, what we are going to do is really very relevant with what we need to do, focus on, on people, process, and technology. So in an era of data explosions, mm -hmm. how does SAS help business ensure that the data being analyzed remain accurate, relevant, and impactful for decision making? Yep. So, I mean, Sinda, this is very key, right? Uh, the end goal is enterprise decisioning, like what you see, right? So data that you analyze is only good as the quality of the data you put it in. So garbage in, garbage out, right? So that's why SaaS, we really focus on our solution to build, to, to get this data, right? So that's why we analyze the data, remains accurate, relevant, and impactful by emphasizing data quality as a core foundation. So if we, we, we call this a, a single source of data, a truth, right? So in, in banking, probably we can say it is a CIF, customer information file, where it refers to a centralized data repository with, with, with SaaS single platform. So we are, we are building our solution, we call it SaaS via, uh, on top of the, our data capabilities. And also we're talking about AI, machine learning, right, modeling there. So we, we, this is very critical uh, business information, is store and manage, right? So we, we need to, uh, uh, we need to ensure that everyone within organization can access the same consistent and accurate data from a single point, eliminating data redundancy and promoting informed decision making across the department. So like what I share with you, it's a key for the company or industry to get the enterprise decisioning using the data, they get the right data, and then data can help them to make decisions. In your opinion, how big a role does uh, machine learning and AI play? It's improving uh, anomaly and fraud detection system mm. in data security. Okay, so I mean, uh, both machine learning, right, and AI play a major role yeah. improving anomaly and fraud detection in data security. So this technology uh, enable companies to shift uh, their approach from detect and react approach to a predict and prevent approach by automatically analyzing large vo uh, volume of data and identifying suspicious pattern that may not visible in human eyes right okay